Gradients can be used to create visually appealing 2D graphics as well as mark out areas of different terrain and plant objects. To create or modify a gradient, we go to the resource browser for the current active document. We can either click Resources, New Resource, and choose Gradient, or we can right-click or control-click on an existing gradient to make changes. As with symbols, if we want to keep the original, we can duplicate it, then modify the new duplicate instead. Here you will see the gradient editor. This is where you choose the colors and width of each band of color in a gradient. Clicking below the bar under properties will allow you to add a new color. To remove a color, drag the slider off of the color bar. The smaller tabs above the color bar mark where the center of the merging of the colors to either side of it will be. In a simple gradient with two colors, sliding this bar will simply change the center of that merge. Pulling either of the end sliders inwards away from the sides of the color bar will increase the thickness of a solid color with no blending on one side of the gradient or the other. To add another layer of control to gradients, you can also manually control how they are applied to objects via the Attribute Mapping tool, which is more closely detailed in another video tech tip. Attribute Mapping allows you to click and drag to control the length, rotation, and X and Y offsets that are located in the Gradient Settings dialog box in the Attributes palette. If we want to change how a gradient is mapped on an object, we go to the Attributes palette and click the Fill Gradient Settings button. X and Y offset control where the gradient begins. This behaves differently depending upon which type you've selected, as well as the shape and kind of object you are applying the gradient to. Length, which is available only in linear, radial, and rectangular gradients, determines how long in real distance the gradient will travel from start to finish. If you do not have repeat enabled, the area not covered by one instance of the gradient will simply be space. Rotation, available only in linear, rectangular, and angular gradients, controls how the gradient itself is rotated in relation to the objects it is applied to. There are four different types of gradient. The first is linear. By default, all gradients are set to linear, which means they fade from one color to another from side to side. Radial. These gradients start with a color in the center and fade to the other included colors within the gradient as it gets further away from the central point. Rectangular. This is similar to radial, except the gradient is in the shape of a rectangle instead of a circle. Angular. This mode travels the spectrum of colors in the gradient as a sweep, like a radar screen or the face of a clock, swinging around a single point and stopping in a straight line. This mode works best when your colors start and end with either similar or identical colors. One of the more common uses of gradients is to represent a water feature, such as a pool, pond, or fountain. Included in some Vectorworks design series symbol libraries, you'll find some fountains and pool objects that can be easily improved by changing the solid fill in the water areas to a blue or green radial gradient. This is normally a simpler and quicker way of marking out water as a pattern or a hatch would normally require a legend or key that the observer would have to decode. Gradients can also be used in top plan to give a 2D textured look to objects, denoted in glass or various types of shiny materials. Additionally, gradients can convey a slope or change in terrain easily, such as a shoreline or a marsh, where drawing multiple shapes and filling each with a different color would be more time consuming. 